Today we're talking about Hasset et al. monkey toy preference. There are differences between male and female brains and the hormones that impact their behavior. Now in society, boys and girls are rewarded for their behavior when acting like boys are rewarded for acting like men and little girls are rewarded for acting like women. Basically being rewarded for acting like someone in their gender that is older. And the vocabulary word of socialism basically says that one is rewarded for behaving or acting in socially desirable ways. And although these are socially desirable, it may come with a gender stereotype. And this is basically a bias that is set up by society. So for example, this could be displayed in books. It could be displayed on commercials or ads. And I know today's day and age is kind of crazy and we do fight for equality, but there are still some occupations or jobs that maybe more males do and there are some that maybe more females do. Now, this study that we're talking about today is a Hasset study that was done on rhesus monkeys. And we use monkeys in this study to kind of prove some reliability that was found in previous studies that was done on human babies in gestation. So in the mother's womb, what hormones were the baby predisposed to and how did that affect their toy preference after they were birthed, after they became a toddler, what toys did they choose? And for the most part, we did actually see that in the womb, babies that were exposed to more estrogen hormones, they were playing with toys that were more directed towards girls like dolls or plush soft toys, blankets, teddy bears. And for boys that had higher amounts of testosterone or we call them androgens, which are male hormones, they came out of the womb uh, playing with toys or wanting to play with toys that were directed more towards boys, things that made loud noises or trucks and um, swords, fighting things. In today's aim though of this study by Hassett, we wanted to see if toy preference in monkeys resembled that in children because we were trying to test whether sex differences in toy preference was due to biology or due to society. And this can be labeled as nature versus nurture. So we have a field experiment and this is a natural outdoor living facility for these rhesus monkeys. It's important to know that the toys were new to them, but not unfamiliar. We had covert observations. This is covert covered. So the monkeys didn't know that they were being watched. And we had seven trials lasting 25 minutes each. We exercised inter-observer reliability where we had two observers watching these video footages. And we were able to watch each animal interact with toys individually. And then our observers coded for specific activities. And they did this with a behavioral checklist. Now we have an independent measures design. So our participants could only be part of one group. Um, and this was a male or a female as our independent variables. And you could also say this was natural design because we couldn't change their gender. But gender was the independent variable. And our dependent variable was the toy that they chose to play with. And something else that we looked at was frequency and duration. For frequency is how often a toy was played with and duration was how long a toy was played with. And at the end, we did conduct a correlation to see if rank or hierarchy within the group had anything to do with toy preference. For example, um, a, a much older monkey would have more time in their society or social socialness of the group opposed to like a baby monkey. Um, and we wanted to see, did that matter? So for our participants, we had 21 males and 61 females, and they were living in their natural natal birth groups. And it's important to know that there were more monkeys around than the ones that were part of the group. There were actually 135 animals total that were in this primate research facility. And we're considering this an opportunity sample. Now, out of these 100, 135 monkeys that were part of this group, 14 adults were actually excluded. And this was because they had previously received hormone treatments. And 39 young infants were also excluded because we had a hard time identifying them. They lived in a 25 by 25 meter outdoor area. And they also had access to like a temperature controlled indoor area. Water was available and they were given like a standard monkey feed twice a day. So the first thing we had to do was operationalize the toys. That basically means we had to define the toys as male toys or female toys. And instead of throughout the study saying male or female toys, we're going to say wheeled toys and plush toys. 
on any toys that had wheels like cars, trucks, shopping carts, that was geared more towards boys where plush, soft, uh, like teddy bear type toys were yielded more towards girls. There were six wheeled toys. It's a wagon, a truck, a car, a construction vehicle, a shopping cart, and a dump truck. There were seven plush toys, a Winnie the Pooh, a Raggedy Ann, a koala hand puppet, an armadillo, a teddy bear, a Scooby-Doo, and a turtle. Apart from color, all the toys in each group very much so mimicked each other in size. So we had two video cameras, we had seven trials, and they lasted for 25 minutes each. So this is how the experiment started. All the monkeys started indoors. We took one plush toy, and we took one wheeled toy, and we put them out in the outdoor area, and they were about 10 meters apart. One video camera faced the wheeled toy, and one faced the plush toy. And we made sure to counterbalance the toy. Sometimes the plush was on the right, sometimes it was on the left, and vice versa with the wheeled toys. And in between each trial, we removed the toys, and we observed the video. We observed each animal playing with the toys, identified their gender, and coded for any behaviors on a behavioral checklist. We also recorded the time and the frequency and the duration at which they played with each toy. Here is a list of some specific activities that were coded on the behavioral checklist. And each description of these within your book is considered an operational definition. And this was specifically to make the coding more reliable in between observers, inter-observer reliability. It's also important to know that there were 14 males and three females that were excluded from this group because they had less than five behaviors checked on the checklist. So the final numbers were 11 males and 23 females. So I had previously said that the trials were 25 minutes long, but interesting fact, because you know that they might ask this question. One had finished seven minutes early because they absolutely like annihilated and destroyed one of the plush toys. So let's talk about the results. And remember, it's duration and frequency. So let's talk about the frequency results first. When it came to the wheeled toys, a mean average of 9.77 males played with wheeled toys in comparison to females, that was a 6.96. So males played with wheeled toys more frequently than girls did. And when it came to the plush toys, a mean average of 2.06 males played with plush toys in comparison to 7.97 females playing with plush toys and that was frequency so quickly let's look at duration and this duration is in minutes so males played with wheeled toys for an average of 4.76 minutes while girls played for an average of 1.27 minutes when it came to the plush toys the males played with plush toys an average of 0.53 minutes less than a minute and girls played with plush toys for an average of 1.49 minutes so overall, boys played with the wheeled toys longer and girls played with the plush toys longer. Now, if we break this down according to like individual monkeys, we saw that overall the male monkeys had like a severe preference for wheeled toys over plush toys. But when we looked at the females, we saw it was kind of even amongst wheeled and plush toys. For example, 73 males preferred wheeled toys while 9 males preferred plush toys. 39 females preferred wheeled toys, but only 30 preferred plush toys. Now, we did find some correlations within rank according to females, but not males. So it's unlikely that rank has anything to do with the sex differences between toys. And just to note, the sample size was a little bit too small for a detailed analysis of this. But oddly enough, when we compared children with monkeys, so past studies by Hassett with this, this current study, the patterns were almost identical. They were so similar. So in conclusion, female monkeys, like female humans, are more variable in their toy choice. Male monkeys, like male humans, have a strong preference for masculine type toys. And males showed a much stronger preference for masculine toys than females did for feminine toys. And this supports a biological or nature explanation for toy preference. And these preferences therefore develop in the absence of any socialism. Make sure to study your animal ethics for this study. And note that there is some difference between how monkeys and children play. Although we had highly standardized controlled observations in the study, previous study with children was a little bit different. The children were assessed with different toys. And the monkeys were assessed in a large group where children weren't. I want to thank you so much for joining my Patreon, and I hope this helps. Make sure to comment down below and subscribe to my YouTube channel.